Uh, hello and welcome to uh, Declutter Your Paperwork. Thank you all for coming. We are live, we are recording. So welcome as you're coming in and you're watching us live today. And if you are watching us on recording, hello to you as well. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, I know it can be a bit of a struggle to get online at a particular time, but I really appreciate you making the effort getting yourself sorted out and organized to be here today for this live workshop. Here we go. Let's continue on. We'll be here for about half an hour to not half an hour, about an hour today, maybe a little bit shorter, depending on how fast I can spit the words out today and how many questions we're having. But as I said, please use the chat to ask questions as we're going along and look forward to helping out with any specific questions that you have in relation to decluttering your paperwork. So as I said, the session is being recorded today and it will be on YouTube, just letting you know that. We'd love to hear where you're joining us from. Pop in the chat. Are you here in Melbourne with me or are you overseas with Mary Lou or um, just around the corner with Jenny? Let me know, I'd love to hear from you pop in the chat where you're joining us from today. And also while you're there putting some comments in the chat, let us know what you're looking forward to learning today about decluttering your paperwork. And why do you think you need to get organized with your paper? What's the big deal? Share it with me so I can help you and make sure that we're covering those points as we're going along today. And at the end of the session today, I'm going to give you some more opportunities to continue the decluttering journey with us. Um, that still comes in the form of some more ongoing free workshops. We've got another one coming up in a couple of weeks. I'll let you know about that. All about decluttering your um, linen press, linen closet, utility closet, whatever you might want to call it. Um, some one-on-one -on -one sessions that we can do on Zoom as well with me. And also we've got a three week decluttering program, uh, kickstart your decluttering in three weeks. So um, I'll share those details in a second. Let's have a quick look at the chat. Uh, Janet's in Hudson Valley, New York. And can I get rid of medical papers? That's a very good question. Um, <laughs> lots of different uh, answers to that. When we come to, letting go of things we no longer need. Let me write it down for Janet so that we can remember that. Let's talk about that. Mary Lou is in the Philippines and yes, she is my awesome virtual assistant. Thank you for being here, Mary Lou. Really appreciate your help as always. And somebody's, uh, Britt is in Phoenix, Arizona. How cool. Love to have people from all over the world joining in these sessions so that we can all come together and learn and I'm looking forward to learning from you guys as well please keep the chat going because I'm sure you are working with your paper and any other things in your home to help you declutter and organize we'd love you to share your tips as well so um, space and time my business um, is all about helping us make conscious choices about how we use our space and time. So it's about not just going with the flow, it's about making deliberate choices. Today, I'm going to be more focused on this, I'm going to spend time on this, and then I'll spend time on that. Yeah, I know that um, life gets in the way and sometimes those plans can go out the window, but we really want to try and make conscious choices about what we surround ourselves with and how we use our time. Uh, we're always creating systems to improve our lives so that we're not having to reinvent the wheel all the time. If we've got young kids at home and we need to get them to you know, school by nine o'clock in the morning, what time do you need to get up in the morning? And, th and that being said, what time does everyone need to go to bed the night before? So those systems can really help us improve our lives. As I said, we'd love to hear what's your intention today. If you haven't already shared with us, what would you like to learn? Why is your paperwork getting in your way? <laughs> um, and also, if there's any, um, uh, sorry, any changes that are easier if we have some sort of intention. If we know that we want to do something with our paperwork, we would need to clear out the study because you're doing more work from home, something like that. We've got that clear intention and that's really going to help us get the job done. 
Um, and as I said, I will share some ways that you can continue the journey um, with us on your decluttering journey. Towards the end of the session, I'll let you know those details. Oh, Bill is coming. Bill said that he wasn't coming, I didn't think. Um, here we are. Sorry, just going back to the chat as well. Susan says, I want to be able to find things. Perfect idea. It's nothing worse, Susan, than wandering around the house and you can't find the bits and pieces that you need. Can't put your hand on it. And Britt says something similar. I need a quick system for paper coming into the house. Fantastic. We will look at that. Thank you all so much for sharing. Here I am. This is me, Julie Cliff. I am a professional organiser and declutter coach. I call myself a professional organiser when I am out in people's homes, helping them declutter and get organised. Uh, here in Melbourne, I am in Australia and um, have lots of different clients that need lots of different things. Uh, yesterday, I just happened to have a paperwork client. We were going through a, uh, a filing cabinet and archiving older documents and keeping the newer ones. So, And this is with a visually impaired client. So I was reading her uh, what the documents were and she was making the decision, will we keep it, uh, will we archive it, or can it just go in the rubbish bin? Uh, so that's my work as a professional organiser and as a declutter coach, I run these sorts of online programs where I'm teaching you the skills, I'm coaching you, so then you can go and do the decluttering and organising yourself. Uh, I think I saw Bill just sneak in before. Hello, Bill. I didn't think you were coming. Great to see you. And we've had a few others come in. Someone else is just coming in as well. I'll continue in my introduction here. I'm an executive assistant by trade, so helping others get and stay organized in an office environment and started my business space and time eight years ago. Uh, married with two uh, sons who are still in bed. It's 10 o'clock in the morning here and it's still school holidays here. Our school year starts in another week um, and my husband is at work. Excellent, Bill. Good on you. No problem that you are a little late. Uh, but again, gold star to you, Bill. You're always at these workshops. Really appreciate you uh, making the effort to be here. And welcome to everybody else, particularly if this is the first time that you have joined us. Now, this is the space and time organizing system. I created these six steps to help you organize your space and your time maybe about eight years ago not quite that long, um, particularly when I started to present workshops like this to give us a bit of structure. And it just sort of happened to come about that I was thinking about the process that we, we do when I'm working in people's homes uh, to keep it moving forwards. I'm just going to quickly run through these six steps and then I'm going to go through them in more detail in relation to decluttering and organising our paperwork. So the first one is stop the stuff. Today, we're going to talk about ways to stop more paperwork from coming in. The second one is your commitment to being organised. That's going to be all about putting time in the diary to work on your paperwork, like the in tray is not a filing tray and the magic fairy does not come away, you know, come along and action items in your in tray. So let's be committed. Let's get organised. Third step is to sort the stuff. We're going to talk about different ways to sort your paperwork. Then we're going to look at tips and techniques for things you no longer need, particularly that question that Janet asked. She was saying, you know, when can I decide to get rid of things? Do I need to keep my medical paperwork? Good question. Uh, and then we're going to look at easy storage. Somebody else just mentioned before that they want to be able to find <coughs> things. Easily, so let's set up their permanent homes for things. And then we're going to talk about maintenance tools, some easy ways to keep us organised with our paperwork each and every day. It's something that we do all the time and not just, you know, every now and then have a big clean up. We want to be neat and tidy and processing as we are going along. So here we are, as I promised, don't forget to use that chat for your questions or if you want clarification, anything that I'm saying or this strange Aussie woman has said a word that I don't even know what she said. Please ask me if you're joining us from somewhere else. Maybe some of the terms I'm using don't make any sense to you. So use the chat and ask some questions there. So here we are. The first step of the space and time organising system is stop the stuff. So what is the big deal of having too much stuff? 
Uh, first of all, it can literally be a trip hazard if you have piles and piles of paperwork on the floor, um, you know, tripping you up and finding it difficult to manoeuvre around your house, particularly some of the clients I have have different disabilities, uh, whether it's low vision, like the client I was talking about that I worked with yesterday, or maybe their arms and legs don't work so well. So it's very important for them to keep safe in their home. So trying to keep things off the floor and ensuring that we haven't just got piles of stuff lying around. Can it, re it really can be overwhelming when there's too much of it and it can be exhausting. And these are the things that my clients say, there's just too much. They don't know where to start. So a really a good place to start is to stop more coming in. Um, and uh, at that bottom point there, it says that the stuff often mounts up because there's no process. We want to talk about a process today for incoming mail, as we were asked the question before, where can I put it when it comes in? What do we keep and what we can let go? And then where will we store it? We're going to talk about those things today. But if we can't stop more things coming in, we can't keep up. We can't have an opportunity to go and tackle the backlog. So the first place to stop is please stop more coming in. Of course, we need copies of important documents. And some people certainly do still like to get a paper copy of their utility bills and that sort of thing. But there might be an old magazine that's lying around the house, uh, a, a auto magazine or a, a membership subscription, something like that that just keeps mounting up you never read it, so I'd love for you to stop that stuff that's not relevant to you anymore that you no longer need. Please stop it from even coming in the house in the first place. Here are a few other ideas on uh, stopping more stuff from coming in the house. And one of them, as I just said, is to unsubscribe from newspapers or magazines that you aren't reading. Yes, you might have the intention, I'd love to sit down with the cuppa and do it. Well, put it in the diary and do it or just let it go. Think about how you could use your time and the fun things that you would rather be doing than rummaging through all your paper. So make that effort to unsubscribe from any of that stuff that's coming into the house that you're not reading and is not important to your life now. Maybe the school alumni newsletter from 50 years ago when you're at school, that might not be relevant to you anymore. Let it go. Stop it from coming in the house in the first place. Another easy, easy peasy way is to put a no junk mail sign on the letterbox. And I did actually see this on my client's letterbox yesterday. I went to her house and I think there's like 16 units in this lovely um, apartment building she was in. And I noticed she was the only one that had no junk mail on her um, on her her mailbox. So I must tell her what a good idea that is because um, we don't need it. Sometimes it is nice to have a bit of a look at what's coming in, um, what the specials are, but there are other ways of finding it. And particularly if if it's just coming up and coming up and piling up and and you're just not getting to it that no junk mail might be a good one. Um, looking at the chat, there's nothing new in there. That's awesome. Um, and another way that you can stop more paperwork from building up is to use a notebook. My, mine's not here at the moment. I just went to grab it before, but it's actually in the car. I left it in there from yesterday. Um, use a notebook for writing things down rather than the back of an old envelope or um, in a scrap of paper, use a notebook so that you've got things in the one place. It can just live on your desk or on the kitchen bench, somewhere that you know that your notebook is and important information is written in there, rather than all these scraps of paper. And then you know exactly where it is if you want to uh, reference that information. So stop more bits of paper from floating around the house by using a notebook. And I'd suggest one notebook. I'd have some clients that have multiple, but let's try one rather than, oh, which notebook did I write it in? If you've got one, that, that will be very helpful. 
And then um, another way to stop more paper from coming in the house is to get your utility bills and any sorts of correspondence sent to you on email. I know that uh, emails can be difficult for people as well. That's more clutter, that electronic clutter, but at least it's not paper and it's not uh, visually uh, dis, you know, disrupting you. And see if you can get those bills and things paid by direct debit, you know, paid automatically. I know, again, that's not always possible. Some people have um, uh, money flow um, challenges so that they can only pay bills at different times and only a portion of the bill, that sort of thing, no problem. But if you are able to uh, get those emails on, um, sorry, your utility bill sent to you by email and get them paid by direct debit so that you aren't even needing to worry about them. And the last tip, of course, there's a million tips. Actually, I'd love you to share what are your suggestions as I'm giving you this last tip. What are your suggestions and something that you are doing at home now to stop more paperwork from coming in the home? The last tip on stopping more stuff is to only keep the receipts you absolutely need to. Uh, when I go into people's homes and help them declutter, uh, often with paperwork, they have receipts everywhere. They've got receipts from the supermarket, from when they paid this or paid that. This just seems to be everywhere. Of course, there are different receipts we need for buying big purchases, like I bought myself a new pair of shoes yesterday. Oh, I can't see it, but bought a new pair of shoes, so I certainly need that to submit with my tax uh, for the next financial year. Uh, and, you know, if I need to return them, I do keep grocery bills for a couple of weeks just to make, sorry, both grocery receipts for a couple of weeks, uh, just in case, again, I need to return things. But the majority of the time, we don't even need a copy of the receipt. Um, just don't even accept it. Tell them the person, no, nope, don't need it. You buy a loaf of bread, no thanks, I don't need that receipt. Again, I see so many receipts, so much paperwork in people's homes. Um, have a go at not even bringing it home at all. All right, let's go into the chat. People are suggesting ways to stop the stuff from coming in. And thank you, Britt. She said, cancelled magazines and newspaper subscriptions. Love it. Please do. Uh, Janet says, I write uh, in the notes area on the iPhone. No paper then. Or I put it in my calendar on my iPhone for me to look at later on. Uh, look at later and address. I love it, Janet, using notes on your phone and also putting something directly in your calendar when you need to do it. Again, so you haven't got bits of paper floating around. I love these tips. This is fantastic for reducing the amount of paper. The summer says, I've heard once before regarding paperwork, only handle it once. What a super idea that is. Haven't started implementing this yet, but that is a great idea. You get something that comes in, uh, for example, one of the kids brings home a notice to say they're going on school excursion. As soon as you have it in your hand, squiggle your name and uh, your note on it right then and there to give them permission. Pick up your phone, put the date in your diary or write it on the calendar so that we know when that excursion is on. Put it back in the kid's bag and off it goes. So only handle it once. I love that idea, Summer. Thank you very much for, um, for suggesting that. Give me some other suggestions where you actually do just handle the, the paperwork once if, uh, if you use that technique yourself. And Britt says new subscriptions pop back up. Yes, sometimes they do too. So we need to keep an eye on that and be religiously and diligently unsubscribing to things. Awesome. Thank you for those. Keep those ideas coming in uh, with more ways to stop the stuff from coming in. I'm just going to grab a sip of water. One sec. So this second step is your commitment to being organised. As I said before, there is no magic fairy. Being organised takes some time, it takes planning and it takes commitment to being organised. Now, people are organised because they deliberately choose to be that way. 
You know, I deliberately choose to wake up at 5.40 each morning so I can do all my morning routine, get the kids off to school and, you know, head off to my clients. That is my choice and my commitment to being organised. And at the other end of the day, I'm in bed by 9.30. Drives my husband bananas. Uh, he would rather I be sitting on the couch later and enjoying a movie, but I know that's what I need to do. Uh, we have one more question. Okay, good on you, Britt. Thank you. I'll just quickly flick to these chats while they're coming in. Britt says she puts her recycling bin next to the shredder. Shred documents would otherwise pile up. Great idea. So again, as soon as those things come in that you know you don't need, put them straight through the shredder or straight in the recycling. I love that idea. Thank you, Britt, for sharing that. Awesome, 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 awesome. So getting back to your commitment to being organised, uh, as I said, it's, there's no fairy takes commitment. So what I would like you to do is to find some time, no, make time in the week to be able to start on this decluttering journey and also for processing paperwork. I'm going to talk about that actual process when we get to maintenance, you know, having a set time each week to go through our paperwork but it, this is in relation to when are you going to start? I'd love you to have your daily planner or um, Mary Lou, I'm sure you've got the link there for our weekly planner if people would like to print it off the website and literally schedule it out. When are you going to start decluttering your paperwork? Plan out the time and let's get started. It, it might be just 10 minutes. 15 minutes every day or 30 minutes on the weekend. It, you, if it's not in the diary, it doesn't exist, doesn't happen. Um, it, if it might be an electronic calendar, it might be a paper diary, um, we really need to get it in there. Thank you, Mary Lou. She's just put that link there for the weekly planner if you'd like to print off a copy so that you can stay focused on the important things in your life. Literally decide what time of the week you are going to work on your paperwork. Uh, the business, as I said, is space and time. So we're talking about decluttering your space and managing your time. And I'm not sure which comes first, the chicken or the egg, but I do really love to focus on the time as well, because if we can have these special and allocated and consciously chosen times in our week to get these important things done our lives run a lot smoother so we'd love to hear from you when is going to be your time to start to get organized it might be a little bit longer time but again you know we still need to feed ourselves we still need to go to sleep we still need to go to work there's lots of things and that's why that weekly planner is good to be able to plot everything out Sometimes in our lives, we can sort of go with the flow and it doesn't really matter when we do things. And I might do this today, I might do it another day. But a lot of the time when we are busy, there's kids involved, there's work, there's elderly parents, there's volunteering. We need to schedule it a bit more than that so that we can actually uh, get those important things done. Um, so, and have a good idea what those important things are. Uh, last week, we ran a focus board workshop where we only chose a few amount of projects to focus on for the year. So really want to be mindful going forward 2023. I just want to be working on these things this year. So uh, that is available on YouTube as well. If you want to go to the space and time um, link and have a look at that. If you're difficult and feeling like you're being pulled from here to there and haven't got time to sit and do your paperwork, maybe we could have a look at where your focus is going. Oh, lovely. Summer says she's going to start tomorrow at nine for 30 minutes. It's her day off. Perfect. I love it. Good on you, Summer. Please do that. That sounds like a great idea. And who else is going to be um, committed and put their time in and let us know when they're going to do that? All right, let's move on to the next step because that's all about being committed to being organised. Anyone disagree with that? Or does any, or any thoughts about your commitment to being organised and having a scheduled um, time to work on? 
also tomorrow at eight to nine says Rhett, good on you look at you guys go love it thank you for being committed to being organized all right step three sort the stuff here we are we're moving along on these six steps of the space and time organizing system so we are going to start to sort out our paperwork and it is amazing how a bit of a flow starts when we start to sort literally put things in like categories or you know like with their friends however you want to describe it get a handful of paperwork and start sorting it out so yesterday as I was saying I was doing paperwork was a little bit different um probably not the best way to to describe the sorting but other clients I've worked with we just be sitting at their desk grab a small handful and go oh okay that's a utility bill we'll put that in one pile oh that's a, a letter from um from your mum oh that's in a different pile oh this is some notes that you wrote about the studies you're doing this is in a different pile so we're doing this sorting and starting to get some sort of uh, process some sort of categories and some sort of order to the paperwork you know we don't just pick up that pile and go I'm going to throw that I'm going to keep this I'm going to get rid of that this sorting step really helps us out to decide what we're going to let go which is going to be in the next step and that's the third point there it says don't go rummaging through and try and find all of the utility bills in that pile or all the letters from your mum or your notes that you've made just go from one piece of paper at a time again you've got your timer on in this process maybe 10 15 minutes or as the girl said they're going to do 30 minutes tomorrow morning uh, would be great just to be able to know that this is going to take a little bit of time as well you can just throw it all in the rubbish bin that will be a nice easy way to clear it all out but there's probably some important things in your paperwork that we do need to make the time to do it's taking a little bit of time to mount up so this is going to take us a little bit of time to you know unravel so there's different ways of course that you can sort your paperwork it might be sorted by date it might be sorted by category like I was just saying about your notes or letters from mum uh, school work those sorts of things or you might create a to-do list or a to file um, but go ahead and start that sorting process and once you've sorted it it really helps you be able to see what you've got and then be able to make the decisions from there as to what um, what you need to keep now this was sorting of some medical paperwork um, that my that I was doing for a client a while ago and we decided we were going to sort it by doctor um, and then their health fund statements and also just the general medical some other um, medicals that that she had been to at this point she had might have been four or five or six four drawer filing cabinets um she'd had lots of health challenges over the years so we were trying to cut down what she had so an easier uh, a, a, sorry a way to be able to decide what to keep which is in the next step <clears throat> uh once you've sorted it uh is to give yourself a bit of a date range like maybe i'll just keep medical files for the last 12 months and I'll keep them here if there's something beforehand I might put them in an archive and if it's before that five years before we might just get rid of completely I'm going to share some other ideas about you know are we just going to throw them away or other ways of capturing information um, I'll share those in a second but um, this was an interesting way of sorting the medical pa paperwork so we can at least see what we've got and then be able to make some decisions from there <clears throat> so step four things you no longer need so if we're <clears throat> excuse me looking at you know helping us decide what we want to keep there are some good uh places that we can look to help us make those decisions so we can set up our own rules um which which then we will help us with the process a bit quicker 
So what you can do is uh, look up keeping tax record records. I've got on the ATO there, which is the Australian Tax Office. So, but you could go to wherever you are in the world and look up keeping your tax records. And that has lots of really inf interesting information about how long you need to keep uh, documents at home. So for example, in relation to the government and tax um, laws, you probably don't need to keep your, um, <clears throat> excuse me, your utility bills if you're not working from home and, and don't use electricity as a part of your business, uh, for example. Um, but of course, there's so many different things. Ask your accountant if you get a bit stuck. But sometimes those rules as to how long you need to keep things, like here in Australia, personal tax, I think, is five years and business tax, seven years. If anybody knows any difference of that, let me know. But sometimes those rules as to what the government says you need to keep and let go can be helpful. Just have a look quickly. Someone's got something in the chat. Oh, good on you. Shira said that she will commit to 30 minutes a day from 3.30 to 4. Good on you. You will get through quite a lot. Oh, well, somebody else said today, hang on one second, sorry, I missed, met, missed Susan said she's going to commit to 30 minutes a day at three o'clock. Good on you. Thank you all for making that commitment to being organised. I really appreciate it. And please keep me in the loop. Send me a, send me a message, a text or an email when you have done that. <clears throat> so getting back to the idea of setting yourself rules to help you with uh, letting go of stuff. So make up your own rules there. And the second point there says to scan and keep electronic copies um, of your documents. Like you were saying about those uh, medical files before, maybe you could scan it and uh, keep it electronically. Again, that is some sort of clutter, uh, but it's, uh, again, it's not something that you're going to trip over. Um, but sometimes scanning can be really handy. Give it a really nice title with the date and, and the description of what it is in the title so that you can use the search going forwards and be able to find it again. Or maybe you can just Google it and find it again. If you've got an article that you've been hanging on to for a long time, maybe you could easily find it again. You don't need to keep that uh, printed copy of it. Google is amazing. Let me know if you use any other search engine that you love um, and share any other resources to refine things. But like I'm suggesting, maybe you don't need to keep it at all if it's going to be easy enough to find it. Also thinking about notes. Um, again, I mentioned before that I find notes and notebooks, but particularly pieces of paper, though, um, on around people's homes. Um, remembering that notes are just a part of the journey. Excuse me for checking my watch. Just don't want to, you know, keep you all here for too long and making sure nobody else is sending me any messages that they haven't got the link or something like that. But remember that notes are a part of the journey. You know, when kids are at school and they're learning to write, they're uh, sitting down, little people can hardly even form the, the, the letters and the words. That's all learning. They're learning to sit still. They're learning to use a pencil. They're uni learning to form the letters. You know, so many things they are learning. What they end up with at the end of their time sitting is not necessarily something that we need to keep. You know, notes are a part of the journey, not necessarily the destination. The same as if you're doing some studies, maybe you've you know, been to university or a different course. Those squiggly notes that you wrote down when the lecturer was up in front of you, that helps the information go into your brain and the writing helps that as well. But they might not even make any sense to you after the class. So you can probably let those notes go. I know people get really attached to their stuff because they've put a lot of blood, sweat and tears into it, but they're probably not even going to read, look at it. And if they did, it wouldn't even make any sense. So Give yourself a bit of grace. Give yourself some permission to let go of some of that old stuff that you might have been hanging on to for a while. Let me know if you've got some old notes or schoolwork of yours still handing around the house. And uh, Let me have a look at the chat. What do we got here? I'll come back to the chat. Whoops, in a second. I'll just finish off this little section here. Notes are a part of the journey. 
and have a go at dictating your notes. Um, I, sorry, I can't remember who it was before, but someone said they use their phone a lot. They put notes straight into the notes section on their phone and straight into their calendar. But look up the idea of dictating important notes to store them electronically. You can even dictate straight into notes. Uh, if you've got an iPhone, you can certainly ensure that there's a little, oh, this is my uh, an updated version um, of iOS on the iPhone, it has a little microphone down in the corner. So you can just tap on that. Oh, no, I'll tap on here. I'll tap on that. Is that working here? Sorry, I'm going to show you how it's going to work in a sec. Here we go. I am talking and dictating straight into the phone. And it will just keep going as you're dictating. So maybe you might be able to do some of your notes this way and keep them electronically. So I was doing that straight into an email. Uh, but you can do it in lots of different ways on your phone. So try that rather than the squiggly piece of paper note, have a go at keeping your notes that way. Any other ways uh, to help you decide what to let go of? Um, any other rules you use, you know, the one in one out type rule? Um, do you have guidelines for yourself as to how long you keep your paperwork? And uh, let me know which working, let me go back to the chat. We have, oh, here we go. This is a long one. Uh, Shira says, a friend with many healthy health challenges who was on a lot of medications over the years kept a binder with nominated page sleeves in it. Yep. Every time she got a new medication, she'd print it out from the pharmacy. This way she'd refer back to. Um, that way she didn't have to get a print out every time she needed it. I like that idea of having a nice binder with all the information in the one spot. Sounds like it's not too difficult to implement either, um, but it's all in the one spot. I love that idea. Thank you for sharing that in relation to your friend's different medications she's on. So she had a binder with a laminated sheet on it so that she could just print out the new list, laminate it and had it in the folder. I think I'm understanding that. Thank you, Shira, for that. Janet says, I have my medical records uh, by specialists. Oh, Janet, lovely. You're sharing how you are sorting it. Lovely, by the different specialists, by th thyroid, cardiologists. And I did get rid of the explanation of benefits. Lovely, that is good. That's, that's a nice category that you're able to let go of. So Janet sharing the different ways she's sorting her medical records by specialists. So that was thyroid, cardiologist, et cetera. But she has managed to get rid of the EOBs, which is the explanation of benefits. I think that's great. So um, anybody else got any great tips on deciding what to keep and what to let go? So that was, um, I'll just quickly flip back to things you no longer need. Letting stuff go can be really difficult. Um, I see it every day and I'm not trying to be flippant about this. I know it's hard, but you really want to keep that end destination in mind. Why are you doing this? Why are we letting go of stuff? Why do we want less paperwork? If you want less paperwork so that it's going to be easier to find things, knock yourself out. Get rid of as much as you can. Get some um, help from like a professional organiser as myself. There'll be someone in your area and get expert help like your accountant and, and your doctors and people around you that can give you some ideas on this as well and what to keep and what to let go. I reckon you will gain a lot more by letting things go than you will lose from letting things go. Less is that less to clean up, less to pick up, less to be overwhelmed by. And a lot of the time we can get these things again. Like I said, can you Google it again? Uh, and let's look at the joy of missing out, the joy of having less stuff rather than, oh, the fear of missing out. I might throw out something that I really need. 
you might um, get rid of something you don't need, but you'll probably get over it. You might be able to borrow it again. You might be able to get it from somebody else. You might be able to get another copy from someone else. So really be, you know, back yourself to be making these decisions to let things go because life is so much simpler when there is less stuff. Um, I can tell you that first and from all the people that I work with on a daily basis um, in my decluttering work. All right, here we go. Second last step, easy storage. Uh, and it is deliberately called easy storage because if it's not easy, it's difficult, it's too hard to do, we're not going to do it. You know, if we have to climb a ladder to get in this attic and get that box under three other boxes to put something away, we're not going to do it. Um, so it really does need to be easy. And it is deliberately this storage step, the S-Y-S-T-E, the fifth step, uh, it's deliberately the fifth step because this is where we want to make the decisions now, how we're going to store the stuff. How are we going to keep the stuff that we have kept? So we did the sorting, we did the decluttering, now we've got a smaller amount of stuff. How are we going to store it? What's going to work best for you for your storage? And the other reason uh, that it is the fifth step in the system that I've been at so many different homes as well. They've got storage containers and folders and binders and folders. And we end up spending more time organizing the organizing stuff, as in the folders and binders, because they've just got too many of it. They just went and bought a, a bundle of it without really knowing what they are storing. So this is why the fifth step is so important, why it's called easy storage and why it is the fifth step. So let's have a think about what is going to be the best way for you to store your paperwork. I'm going to give some examples here in a minute. But overall, we want your paperwork to be easy to file, as I said, easy to put away, easy to know where it is. And uh, so that, uh, otherwise, as it says there, it's not going to get done. So I'll show you some examples shortly of, you know, just the good old alphabetized filing cabinet. Uh, of course, we can use the electronic files, which we've mentioned a few times today, um, having uh, a lot of your documents scanned in or saved from email, using a good description in the name of the file. So you can just use the little magnifying glass to search and retrieve documents that way. Or it might be a box with a year written on. Uh, I'll tell you a story about that second. Um, but it doesn't need to be complicated, just nice and easy and to sort, sorry, to suit you, uh, nobody else. We'd love to hear your thoughts as we're going through, which is the best system for you? What works well for you? We're all different. Some of us are very visual and we like to see things right in front of us. Others, that's too overwhelming, so they want to tuck it away in a, a, a filing cabinet. Let me know what's the, going to be the best way for your storage of your stuff. As I mentioned, a nice easy way to store your paperwork might be just in a box. And I always tell this story when we're talking about paper decluttering. Um, I posted this picture which is on the right uh, on social media a number of years ago, would have been 2018 on Facebook. And um, somebody was kind enough to send me a note to say I'm going to unfollow you because how could you possibly say to um, store your paperwork in a box. And she was perfectly right to say that. It, this system is not right for everybody. It is difficult to retrieve something from that box if you have a lot of paperwork, you know, lots and lots of paperwork, different people, different places. But uh, having paperwork in a box like this is much better than having it all over the house you know I've seen it in the toilet I've seen paperwork in the laundry I've seen it in the garage but at least if you knew that um, you, all your paperwork that's coming in was in a box um, you would know where to find it because it's in that box but you might have a pretty box as well for a different reason maybe you have an investment property or um, fam some family affairs or family estate and you could just put it in a box like that or you might be doing your tax put your documents in there give it to the accountant here you are sir 
here is my current, um, uh, you know, my current year of tax documents. Again, this is very, very basic. Um, not ideal, not perfect, but it might be all you need. Maybe you haven't got very much stuff coming in. So maybe one of these systems would work for you. Would it? Share it in the comments and let me know, uh, would this system work for you? But then, of course, we can start to get a little bit more detail with using folders and indices, you know, the good old 1 to 31 tabs or setting up your own tabs like the uh, manual folder on the right, uh, storing different things under the tabs. So these uh, uh, tabs would go in a you know, clip binder, ring binder, lever arch folder, something like that, and then put the folder on the, on the shelf. You know, that works for lots of different things. Uh, we'd love to hear if you're using something like this at home. Someone's got something in the chat. Uh, lovely, Susan says she loves to sort things into categories and then in the lever arch folder. So she might like something like this with these tabs as well. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing. Keep those ideas coming. And then you might like to get uh, a little pretty as well. Maybe you like to sort things and store them by colour so you can easily see that, oh, yeah, <clears throat> I know that all the medical stuff is red. So it might be in a drop folder, like on the right, these um, yeah, drop files, or in a, in a folder stored vertically labeled it probably has the plastic pockets in it um, to be able to look up stuff so maybe color coding might work for you I know uh, my sons when they they started high school they had a particular colored folder for each subject so that they would know that you know blue is for history or whatever it might be so see if color coding works for you for storing your paperwork Let's go back to to, to make uh, sorry to easy storage. We'd love to hear if there's something I've missed. What's another good way to store your paperwork? Again, this needs to be nice and easy so it happens, and we can be doing it as we are going. Um, and I will talk about this story right now because we're talking about easy storage. I was with a client before Christmas, and we had just decided this piece of paper. Yes. This is something I want to keep and it was to do with her business. And so she leaned forward and she went to, well, actually, she said to me, oh, I'll put it in my in tray. And I said, well, why would you put it in your in tray to file when literally the filing cabinet was 30 centimetres to her left and she could just open the drawer and put it straight in? If we can do things in five, 10 seconds, let's get them done right now. Let's just take those few seconds rather than let things mount up in your tray for filing and having to sit for half an hour or more doing your filing. Why not just reach over and put it in your filing straight away? So easy storage so that this slots in there, drop it in where, where it goes and then be able to move on with the rest of your day. Oh, lovely. Here we are. Janet says she um, sometimes has the accordion folders with 12 months. So after paying a bill, uh, they get filed in the month and only keep receipts for tax purposes. I love that. So the accordion files or the, um, the um, there's another name for them. Can't think what the, it is, but yeah, it's an expanding file. Drop things in with um, bills that you're paying over 12 months probably take last year's out as you go along and only keep the receipts for tax purposes. Love it, Janet. That's a lovely system. Nice and easy. Just perfect for what we are talking about here. Thank you again for sharing. So I'm going to move on to the next step because we've only got 10 minutes left. Where has that time gone? Maintenance tools. So we want to, again, continue to be able to be processing our paperwork each and every day. Somebody asked about the process for incoming paperwork. Certainly would suggest that we're going to have, well, here's one of those folders that we were just talking about, the accordion file. If we can, let's file the paperwork straight away, just as, as I was talking about the story with my client. Let's put it straight away. But of course, as things are coming in, somebody asked at the start, well, what's the process? 
we probably would have an in tray. So as you're, say, picking up your mail from the mailbox, walking to the front of the house, you can flick through it and see, oh, that's rubbish, straight into the recycling as you're coming into the house. Walk, 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 and walking straight to your desk or wherever you have your in tray to put that um, those documents. This is the incoming process. But as I mentioned before, that in tray is not a filing system. The in tray is not somewhere where it automatically and magically gets processed. Let's put some time in the diary, as we were mentioning before, to process our paperwork. And we had a couple of you already commit to getting some paperwork done this afternoon or tomorrow morning. Let's have that a weekly action, or it might even be a couple of times a week, or it might even be once a day to be able to process that paperwork that's coming in. Uh, and that means you might only be spending a couple of minutes on it rather than 30 minutes at the end of the week. Uh, and so this is diarising that time, having that weekly action time for your to-dos uh, that are in your in-tray. So you might have uh, received a piece of paper that is for a specialist appointment that's coming up next week. So you might get the piece of paper, go to your calendar, put it straight in the calendar that you've got that appointment with the, with the doctor, with the specialist. Make sure you've got the address and all the details off that piece of paper that's just come in from your doctor and put it in straight away. Try and do things as, as quick as you can. Or if you can't do it right at that second, at least you know that tomorrow you've got that time in the diary to be able to action this paperwork that's coming in. So I hope that's explaining a little bit of the process for incoming paperwork and being able to have that time to action what that is. And also know yourself, choose the time of day that suits your energy level. So don't ask me to do any processing of paperwork at nine o'clock at night because I'll be getting ready for bed. I'll be in my pajamas and my brain has already uh, you know, turned off for the day. But absolutely at eight o'clock in the morning after I've been for my walk and before I go to my clients, paperwork is a thing that I can certainly tackle. To tell you the truth, I don't have a huge amount of paperwork because a lot of it is automated, bills are paid automatically. Um, and it's just a little bit that we're doing each and every day, but it certainly is something that I like to do first thing in the morning. But you might be an afternoon person. You know, don't do anything at three o'clock in the morning, uh, but it maybe later in the day might suit your energy levels. And of course, with these maintenance tools, don't forget to go all the way back to the start of the system every now and then, and remember to stop more stuff from coming in. Uh, somebody mentioned actually in the chat that sometimes those recurring things and those subscriptions seem to find their way back to us again. So we might need to unsubscribe a few times uh, and then going through to making sure you are committed, doing the sorting, letting things go. You might need to tweak the easy storage system that you set up so that maintenance every day is easier. And of course, stay committed to being organized. As I mentioned, that organized people are that way because they deliberately do things in their life that help them be that way. You know, athletes do particular things to keep them healthy and for them to be at their highest level. Why can't we have things in our daily routines that help us be the most organized that we can be? Please share below what new habit, what daily or weekly thing in relation to organising your paperwork are you going to take up? Share below so that we can have that maintenance as a part of our daily life. All right, Shamini, Shamini maybe, um, she says, I'm assuming it's a she, it's, uh, my husband takes photos of tax receipts on his phone. Beautiful. So it's, it's, it's um, take the photo and it may even link to his accounting system. They are so clever these days. But even so, take a photo of the receipt, you've got it, and can either file the receipt or just let it go completely. So thank you for sharing that. I love it. Don't forget to let us know below what you have enjoyed most today, particularly with this maintenance 
step. Let me fly through here. As we've said, we've looked at the six steps and steps. Uh, we've reviewed what we're doing. We've unsubscribed. We've automated and set up electronically where we can. So there's less and less paperwork coming in. We sorted the like items. We set up the storage of the permanent home so that it's easy to retrieve. And we've got it so that the maintenance just happens each and every day. Good on you, Susan. She says she's going to have a weekly admin slot over and above twice the weekly sorting. Good on you. That uh, has inspired her and she does choose to be organized. Good on you. Thanks, Susan. I love that. That is fabulous. Good on you. All right. Let me go to these last things I did promise. The journey does not stop here. We'd love for you to join us for the next workshop for the util utility press, linen press, linen closet. What do you call it? Um, which is Thursday, the 2nd of February. So in two weeks time at the same time of day um, here, 10 a.m. Melbourne time. I think Mary Lou has probably just put in the link. Yes, there is the link to, um, to register through Eventbrite. Thank you, Mary Lou. Come along to that one. And also we have a three week course starting. As I said, it's going to be on five o'clock on Wednesday. So five o'clock Melbourne time. It might be probably the day before if you're joining us from the States in your evening. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, actually, I'm not sure. I've, you, uh, I'd need to help you with the conversions if you need it. It might be more likely morning actually for you. Five o'clock my time. Melbourne time for an hour, three weeks to kickstart your journey to an organized space. So we're going to spend even more time on these six steps uh, and looking at ways that we can declutter and organize our spaces at home. So we have the link for that in the um, in the chat Mary Lou has put and somebody else has said, Shira says, I will start using an accordion file for bills and important paperwork. I'll keep my medical paperwork in a tote bag. Fa fabulous. As long as it is all together, it just makes so much sense to have it all in one spot, doesn't it? So you can easily find it. But as I said, thank you for being committed and putting all that information in today to show me your commitment. But as I said as well, we'd love to, you to be on this journey and continue that as a check in. Join us for an hour on Zoom just like this. We'll share some more. There'll be a handout. There'll be some checklists and a Facebook group as well that we ch um, share information as we are going along. And there's also some one-on-one -on -one time. If you are finding you just can't get everything done, I've got a six-week one-on-one coaching program I'd love you to uh, hook up for. Um, if you are strug struggling with managing your space and your time. And again, Mary Lou has put that link in. So save the chat on the way out by pushing the little three dots that says more. And uh, that's not, is, is that where it is? No, it's not. Save the chat is in the chat. Sorry, we go into chat and the little dots beside uh, the chat that would save. So you have all of those links, but we will send them again this afternoon when we send out the recording. And also there's a 15 minute strategy call as well. We'd love a chat if you're interested in joining, joining the, the three week program. Again, Mary Lou has put that link to book a chat. Let's have a chat about it. So thank you uh, again on your way out. Just drop me one tiny thing that you loved that you're going to implement. Um, on your way out. We'd love that and look forward to seeing you at the next workshop, the Linen Press workshop, so you can continue your decluttering journey. And of course, we'd love you to be on that um, three week program as well. Look at that right on 11 o'clock. If you have any questions, just send them to me um, by email. You've got my details that we sent out the reminders from. So thank you all for joining me and uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Good on you. She's going to diarise her commitment. Good on her. Bill, good on you. Great to see you again, my gold star attendee. You are welcome. And thank you all, everyone, for coming. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Jenny. 
Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Susan. Thank you, Mary Lou, for your help. And thank you, Sarah, Sh Shira. Um, and Shira says, thanks so much. I found this very helpful and encouraging. Lynn is going to do daily paperwork. Beautiful. I'll save these comments too. Will be very helpful for us to have. I'm going to, I think I'll stop the recording first and then I'll do that. Here we go. Thank you all again. Bye for now.